It's been just over a year since I reviewed the TID Radio Bluetooth Radio Programmer. Let's take a look at what's changed. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. In this video, we're going to use the Baofeng UV82HP Handy Talkie, the TID Radio BL1 Bluetooth Programmer, and the latest version of the OD Master or Odd Master app to program the radio. By the way, the programmer and the UV82HB radio used in this video were both provided by TID Radio. As most of you know, programming a small HT from the radio's faceplate is not hard, but it can be extremely tedious. There are just lots of key presses to move among the menu items, make selections, and save channels. Programming a repeater into a little HT can involve dozens of presses for just one channel. For many hams who plan to fill in a number of repeaters plus other receive-only channels such as marine band or GMRS channels, using the radio's customer programming software or CPS and a Windows computer is much easier. Using the Chirp CPS, an open source programming tool, is even better if your radio is included in the Chirp library. The big advantage to Chirp, in my opinion, is the ability to import channels from predefined listings such as marine band channels, NOAA weather channels, and GMRS channels, as well as importing repeater listings from sources like repeaterbook.com. If you're planning to add a bunch of channels, that's where I'd start. Now, between manual inputs and a CPS, TID Radio has come out with the BL1 Bluetooth Programmer. This little dongle plugs into your radio using the radio's K connector on the side and links to your smartphone via Bluetooth. You use the OD Master or Odd Master app on the phone to make your menu selections and to program your channels. First, a note about the BL1. In this video, I'll be using version 1 model of the device. Currently, version 2 is the model that you'd get when ordering. The two primary differences are the version 2 model move the pins so that the dongle faces up <laughs> instead of down. Version 1 sometimes had a fairly tight fit depending on how thick the connector was that covered the K connector outlets on the radio. The second big difference is version 2 model has a USB-C charger input instead of the mini USB on the version 1 model. The devices are available on Amazon for about $25 US. I'll have an affiliate link in the video description below. There have also been several changes to the Oddmaster smartphone app since my original review. Two of the big changes are very cool. First is the ability to store your various radios programming files in your Oddmaster account online on your computer, and on the phone. This account links your phone's Oddmaster app so you can do the programming through a browser on a window in your computer, store the files, and then access them via your phone to update or replace your programming scheme wherever you are. Second is the ability to use your phone's GPS location services and call up a list of nearby repeaters and import them directly into your radio without having to use some other reference and a bunch of key clicks. This includes the repeater's call sign, input and output frequencies, CTCSS codes, offset, the whole shoot match with just a touch on the import button. 
This makes it ridiculously easy to take your radio on the road with you and with just a couple of touches on your phone, add that frequency to your radio to chat with hams in whatever city you might be visiting. What hasn't changed is the primary user interface on your phone. With limited screen real estate, there are still a couple of things that are a bit clunky, but they're so much easier than programming on the radio directly for all but the most basic tasks. The other thing that some have complained about is having to register to use the app. One of the reasons for that is that there are social media components to the app, such as messaging directly with TID Radio support and with other TID Radio users. The other reason for registration is that the app needs to know who you are to store your programming files and link them with your phone using the web-based portal. Almost all service providers require a free account to match your needs and orders, etc. So for me, this isn't a big deal. If your privacy concerns are greater than mine, use one of the many email accounts most ISPs allow or set up a Gmail or Microsoft email account for some additional separation from your main email. With that overview, Let's connect up the UV82 and open the app and web browser and do a quick tour of the programming tools you'll have with the BL1 Bluetooth programmer using Oddmaster. So this is the Oddmaster main display that you'll get when you log into your account. Uh, you'll get the login screen first and then you'll move to your account page, which is what you see here. Uh, here you can see that you've got the index and these are all of the radios that the Oddmaster app supports. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be using my UV82. So I've highlighted that. For example, if I hit Baofeng up here, it would fill in all of the Baofeng uh, data files that I had saved. But in this case, just to make things simple, we've got the UV82. This is it right here. Uh, you can see that I saved it on the 18th of August of 2022. And so if I want to make changes to that, I hit over here on the edit. Now, before I do that, let's just look at a couple of things here uh, on the screen. So here, this just changes the width of this area over here. Um, here, it knows that I'm in English. Here it's still got a couple of little Chinese characters, um, my account name, and here I can search, I can refresh. So if I had saved something from my phone and I hadn't noticed it here on the app yet, I could refresh and it would display. Here it changes it from uh, just a list to a, um, a more detailed uh, square of information and it swaps back and forth. So now, if I want to make an update to this, I've got this one highlighted. I can either hit update here or I can hit the edit here. And then it comes in with this display, which is my channel information. Now, I have programmed a bunch of channels into the UV82 to be able to show you what it has available here. So you can see here on channel zero, I left that blank channel one. I've got the VHF call, I've got UHF call in channel two, and then I've added several uh, local area repeaters uh, that I have available to me. Uh, plus, I have some out of the area channels. When I go camping and here in Quartzsite, when I go to the Quartz Fest Festival in January, uh, that, for example, is the uh, local simplex channel there for that event. And so I can give each of these channels a name that will display on the radio. And I'm limited here to, um, you know, about five or six um, characters. I think it's six. Um, so you need to get creative with your abbreviation so that the name means something to you. Because I generally don't um, uh, go by call signs for repeaters. For me, they're just too hard to remember. So here when you add a repeater, you simply uh, type 
in these boxes. These have drop-down boxes for decode and encode. These are your C, D, C, S, S, and D, C, S uh, codes that are available. Um, decode is the receive, encode is the transmit, and uh, since this is a call channel, it doesn't have any. And here you can see various repeater uh, CTCSS codes. Um, the power settings are all here. Uh, I've got them set to low. These are, you know, easy uh, to change. So if I wanted this one is pretty close, uh, I could set it to high, uh, probably go through and set these to high. And then because this is the HP version of the UV82, it's actually got three. So, um, you know, starting with high on most of these uh, is what I'm going to do. Uh, but then I'm going to uh, uh, go back and change some of these to mid-level so that I can, you know, not be putting out more power than I need to to accomplish the task. And I'll make that change on the radio. And so I've got that all set and now um, here I can move over to my optional features and this one is the one that gives you some of the other things that are set in your radio. So uh, I can set my timeout timer. I like that to be about two minutes. Squelch level three usually works. I don't use Vox. Uh, I'm going to want it to speak to me in English. I want my uh, ABR uh, to be three. If you noticed on the tour, I had set it to off um, because I wanted you to see it on the camera. Uh, the power save is uh, one to three, and that means that, that it's just the number of uh, uh, seconds that the, the radio isn't listening, so it's not using the battery. You can change it all the way up to one to four, so one second listening out of the three seconds selected. Um, the scan Rev really is a uh, the scanning mode. I like mine in the time operation. I don't use PTTIT uh, IDs. Uh, that's more of a commercial application that's built in here into this radio. Uh, I don't put my keyboard or auto lock on. Uh, busy channel lockout I tend not to use. I just listen. Uh, the beep is on the radio here. Are my color choices. Uh, I've got the uh, squelch tail on. And then here are just a number of the other things that you can set. So that's the information that you can get here in optional features. Uh, this has to do with the VFO mode. I don't work in VFO mode. You can see that there's stuff here that you can set in terms of, uh, you know, where the frequency starts and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I just leave that alone. And then the DTMF has to do with sending codes when you uh, push the alarm button or when you push to talk. And again, that's not a function for um, amateur radio that uh, most people would use. Now that I've made some changes, and so I'm going to get ready and save it. And since that this one was done on August 17th, and now it's the 18th, I'm going to change the date in that to uh, 22, 2022-0818 and for the UV82, so it goes in the right place, and I'm going to click Save. And so now you can see uh, I'm in my Baofeng one, uh, and I've got uh, the UV20 220818. If I go over here to UV82, uh, you can see that I have updated that, and that's replaced the old um, the old file. So um, you know it's not saving, and and that's okay, I guess. Uh, it'll have the last one that you've used without uh, you know cluttering your phone up with a bunch of files that uh, uh, you don't have. Uh, when you're making a lot of changes. Uh, doing that initial programming in Chirp is a great way to do it. That way you can save uh, each iterative version in your Chirp file. Uh, and then you can make the subtle changes here uh, where you're not having to do quite as much typing. So that's the Oddmaster app here on the computer. Now let's turn to the app on the phone. And so in this case, you can see I've got it connected. 
Uh, when you press this when you first start it, assuming that you've got the TID radio um, Bluetooth dongle in your radio, the radio and the dongle both turned on uh, and the volume set fairly high, it's going to give you the name of this device. In this case, it's Kit. Uh, I've got it set at 9600 baud, I think is what that number means. And I clicked uh, turning it on and it made the connection. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and press the, um, the radio. So I've had this open, so it came up as UV82, but if you were starting from scratch, it would say select radio. And so I went to Baofeng on my choices, and it gave me all of the Baofeng models that this app supports. I pick the UV82, it comes up there. And now if I'm happy with what I have in my radio and I wanna duplicate it and maybe make some small changes, I would hit read and it would come from the radio. In this case, I made changes in the web portal, so I wanna to write to the radio. So instead, I'm gonna to go to Programs and Settings. I'm gonna to go to the Transmit Received List, and you can see here is the, um, the cached version that I have uh, from today's date. And now that is loaded into um, the program here or the app on my phone. And so we know that that's good because if I look on channel three, I can see that I have my frequencies. I've got my power set the way I have made changes to the radio uh, a few moments ago. And I've got the Sun City repeater name there, which is what this repeater is on channel three. Now, if I want to go to my functions, you can also see that I can make those A and B band F, uh, VFO mode functions. Again, I don't mess with those. I don't mess with DTMF, uh, but my timeout timer is now 120. My squelch level is three. My uh, voice is English uh, and so forth on down the line. So all of those changes that I made on the computer portal are reflected here now in the app. And if I wanted to make changes while in the app, I could. I could update this file and it would update via the data connection on my phone back to my account on the portal. So uh, that all works uh, pretty slick. So I'm going to go back to channel uh, and, um, and then I'm going to go back one more here and show you a couple of the things here at the bottom. So we were just in the programming mode here. If I go to offline, it'll tell me what I have had available. So I've been playing around and so I've got two. I've got one made uh, earlier today. Uh, this is that uh, 818 one uh, and then one from yesterday. And then the one I have loaded, it came from online and that's the uh, 818 with the UV82 uh, moniker on it. So uh, those are what I have available to me offline if I didn't have a data connection. Uh, the status button uh, is just a way to see some of those social media things um, and um, uh, make some uh, comments or questions and so forth. Me is just going to be about my accounts um, and some information about the app. So let's go here to program again and we're going to go back into program setting and I want to point out the other cool function that is new here in these later versions of this Oddmaster app and that is this repeater list idea and so if I click repeater list the app uses the um, GPS function of my phone and it tells me what repeaters are nearby and so if I go up here I can click and I just leave the channel function, I can go back. Um, but if I go down here and then go to the three bars for you know what's typically a menu um, uh, icon, I can sort the distance so I can go up to a thousand miles. This is set for a hundred miles. Uh, and I'm sorting by distance, but I could sort by frequency, call sign, or location as well. So I'm gonna sort by distance at a hundred miles. I'm gonna confirm. And you can see then that I have all of these repeaters that are within 100 miles of where I am. Now, at the top of the list here, it says uh, Phoenix Honor Health Deer Valley, which is a hospital not too far from where I am, about five miles. Uh, and to import this into the radio, it's just so easy. I'm just going to import 
button. I'm going to scroll down to the channel and I want to make sure it's an empty channel so I know I don't have anything down at the bottom of the list. So I'm going to import it to channel 72 and then I'm going to hit import. And now it's part of this program uh, file that I'm going to write to my radio. Now I can validate that by opening up the channel, scroll down to 72, and you can see there's the frequency for that a repeater, the CTCSS code, and the um, call sign for that repeater. And if I wanted to change the name of the repeater, I could just type in there and, and put, you know, like HHDV for Honor Health Deer Valley or whatever other kind of um, name makes sense to me. At this point, then, I could write this um, to my radio and you can see that the write is progressing across this little indicator right here. The green lights are flashing both on my radio and on my um, uh, programming dongle. It's almost done. I can confirm that the write is complete. And then I can save this and I can give it a name. And so I'm going to call this um, 2022 8 18 test. I'm going to confirm that. It's successfully saved. If I go to my repeater list, now you can see that I've got the 2022-18 test is there. And within just a couple of minutes, it's going to show up on that web portal uh, index page as well. So that's how you do the Oddmaster app together with the web portal to make this uh, really uh, an easy uh, tool to have with you. I find the repeater list idea is particularly compelling if you're a road warrior, you know, if you're driving a truck or if you, you know, fly to various business locations and you like to play radio out on the hotel patio, having the little TID radio uh, Bluetooth programmer with you, the OD Master app on your phone, it'd be easy as pie to uh, find a repeater that's close to where you are and join in the conversation there at that uh, new city and get a chance to talk with other hams that uh, uh, you normally wouldn't interact with, especially here in the uh, two meter or 70 centimeter area. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, making adjustments to the settings on your radio using the Bluetooth programmer and Oddmaster app is really easy. When you add the functions found on the web portal for online storage of your settings, the very cool GPS repeater listing, and just the overall ease of use, the TID Radio Bluetooth programming dongle and Oddmaster app seems well worth the money. The only caveat is that your radio must be listed in the library of supported radios. They're always adding to the list, but if your model isn't listed, it isn't going to work. Currently, most of the listed radios are either Baofeng devices or those related to Baofeng with alternative brand names. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. 73 and thanks for watching.